Are you enjoying the dance, Mr. Darcy? Very much. It's your turn to say something, Mr. Darcy. I talked about the dance. You should make some kind of remark about the size of the room or the number of couples. I'll say whatever you wish me to say. Very well, that remark will do for present. Perhaps by and by I may remark that private balls are pleasanter than public ones, but not yet. Do you talk by rule then when dancing? One must arrange the conversation so as to have the trouble of speaking as little as possible. Are you consulting your own feelings, or do you imagine that you're gratifying mine? Both. I see a resemblance in the turn of both our minds. We are each of a taciturn, unsocial disposition. Unwilling to speak, unless it be to say something that will amaze the world. Mr. Wickham was talking of you the other day. I see he's not here tonight. Mr. Wickham is blessed, unlike myself, with such happy manners as may ensure his making many friends. He seems to have lost your friendship, Mr. Darcy, in a manner most unfortunate. He will suffer for it for the rest of his life. Oh. Oh. Dancers, Mr. Darcy, must appear quite spectacular in the provinces. But I hear you are quite delighted with George Wickham, Miss Eliza, <laughs> the son of old Wickham, the late Mr. Darcy's steward. <laughs> As a friend, might I advise you not to pay too much attention to what he says? His coming to the country at all was remarkably insolent. He is guilty of infamous conduct towards poor Mr. Darcy. I pity you for the discovery of your favourite's guilt, but considering his descent, one could not expect much better. His guilt and descent appear to be one and the same. You have accused him of nothing worse than being the son of Mr. Darcy's steward. Beg your pardon. It was meant kindly. Mr. Bingley has taken every dance. I hope you were kind to Mr. Darcy. Mr. Bingley says that he's sure Mr. Wickham's story is untrue. Mr. Darcy, as we know, shows a different face to many people. I have not a doubt of Mr. Bingley's sincerity, but I think he is mistaken, and Mr. Wickham much put upon. Looking forward to the marriage, my Jane and Mr. Bingley. Oh, such a charming young man and so rich and living so near and so good for the other girls. He will wake up their ideas of a husband. I have no doubt of it. You mean the match is arranged? Oh, bound to be. Look at them. How they bill and coo like doves. Mother, hush, please. I only hope your dear Charlotte does as well. And I'm positive she will. Positive. And as for you, Eliza, I will speak as loud as I will, where I will. And what if Mr. Darcy does overhear me? I'm sure we owe him no special civility. You forget yourself, Mother. We only have to allow for the necessary preparations of settlement, new carriage, clothes and so on. And undoubtedly, we shall soon see Jane settled at Netherfield. And Elizabeth, of course, with Mr. Collins. Mr. Collins? 